Good evening and welcome to Nationwide on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. I'm Ayo Deji Makindi. President Bola Tinubu has departed Abuja for the United Kingdom for a two-week vacation, part of his yearly leave. The president departed through the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport at about 2.30 this afternoon, Wednesday. Secretary to the Government of the Federation, George Akume, and Chief of Staff to the President, Femi Bajabiamila, were among the top government functionaries who bade the President farewell. A statement by the Presidential Advisor on Information and Strategy, Bayo Ononuga, indicates that the President will spend the two weeks as a working vacation and a retreat to reflect on his administration's economic reforms is expected to return after the leave expires. Achieving economic transformation, poverty reduction and self-sufficiency in food production require acquisition of skills in advanced agricultural practices. This prompted the Senate to pass at second reading a bill seeking the establishment of Federal University of Agriculture and Tropical Studies, Iragbiji, Oshun State, Sponsored by the Senate leader, Okpayemi Bamidili. Senate also adopted a motion from Senator Abdul Fatai Buhari urging the federal government to complete rehabilitation of the Ogbomosho Oyo Road. Senate has in the meantime invited the Minister of Works as a plan to investigate reasons for the abandoned road projects. In the meantime, the House of Representatives has unanimously passed a resolution seeking amendment of the National Honours Act of 1964 to ensure what it calls parity in conferment of the National Honour of Grand Commander of the Order of the Niger GCON on the Senate President and the Speaker of the House of Representatives. This follows the adoption of a motion of urgent public importance by the Deputy House Spokesman Philip Agbese on behalf of the 360 members, the lawmakers describe the conferment of the National Honours of Grand Commander of the Order of the Niger GCON and the Commander of the Order of the Federal Republic CFR on the Speaker as a discriminatory subordination which should be corrected. As co-head of the National Assembly and accordingly conferred the National Honour of GCON upon the Speaker ensuring parity in recognition of the President of the Senate. This should be accomplished before the formal declaration by Mr. President. The Speaker is the fourth in protocol. The CGN comes after. Today, the CGN is given the award, the honor of GCON. I think there is some, some mismatch, some mix up. It is not something that has happened only on this administration but it's an institutional uh, error that has festered for too long. The issues here, they have to do with history, with tradition, with correcting past injustices and miscarriage of re recognition and constitutional order. The Constitution uh, did not mention that a chamber is higher than any other chamber. I think it's about our own institution, uh, like it's been mentioned. We must rise to the occasion. It's not the executive. There is a committee responsible for that, and that committee is headed by a very senior and honorable person. And I believe he will listen to it, and that is Justice Honorable Justice Tilly Baggy. The House re referred the resolution to an ad hoc committee to be chaired by the majority leader, Julius Iovere for legislative compliance. Elsewhere, the House of Representatives felicitates with its speaker, Tajuddin Abbas, on his 59th birthday and conferment with the National Honor of Commander of the Order of the Federal Republic by President Bola Tinubu. The House, in a statement, says Speaker Abbas has consistently demonstrated the qualities of a nation builder through his humility, accessibility, and extraordinary capacity for consensus building. The lawmakers describe the prestigious award of Commander of the Order of the Federal Republic as befitting for Speaker Abbas as he continues to champion reforms that advance the interests of all Nigerians. The 
federal government has commenced nationwide distribution of 2,000 compressed natural gas CNG-powered tricycles to some beneficiaries in Abuja. Olayinka Ojo reports that the event is part of activities to mark Nigeria's 64th independence anniversary. In Nigeria today, there are more than 80 million commercial tricycles and motorcycle owners and riders. An implementation of the presidential CNG initiative is to reduce the cost of transportation for Nigerians as well as enhance economic well-being by reducing dependence on premium motor spirits and expenditure on federal government fuel subsidy. Thousands of youths across our country will be employed, not just in the operation of these tricycles, but also in the maintenance. If you look at the budget of various ministries, departments and agencies, it contains a reasonable proportion of youth projects in their respective budgets. Yesterday, we released 122 billion naira to six investors that are investing in the gas sector. For the Tricycle Association members, the empowerment will not only lift their livelihood, but will also support the administration goal of job creation, poverty, elevation, and environmental sustainability. For the youth development ministers, plans are already in place to increase the number of CNG tricycles from 2,000 to 5,000 and will be distributed across states of the Federation and the FCT. We are ready to eat the road and nothing but to eat the road. This intervention will serve as a great relief to our people. This event is in line with keeping to the promise of President Bola Tinumbu to empower Nigerian youths for self-reliance. Olainka Ujo, NTA News. The federal government is addressing and assessing its power generation plants with a view to addressing all issues for improved electricity generation. Maureen Leo Ajom reports on this initiative. The Calabar Power Plant, located in Odubani Cross River State, has an installed capacity of 562.5 megawatts, but industry record shows that it is not generating electricity at full installed capacity. Challenges of gas supply, instability of the grid, and load rejection are some of the issues confronting the power plant, and the federal government says is poised to resolve all encumbrances as it targets 6,000 megawatts generation by December. The vision of our new management is to ensure that we foster energy security by bridging access, electricity access gaps to vulnerable Nigerians in underserved communities, which is why we're here to ensure that we're building the capacity of all our assets to meet the access gaps in the market. The fact-finding team interacts with staff and industry players where submissions on how to address challenges of power generation were brought to the fore. The team is expected to inspect other power plants across the country. In Calabar, Maureen Liu, Ajom, and in News. The successes recorded by the economic community of West African states, ECOWAS, since inception are largely because of the invaluable contribution and support of Nigeria, its host country. And as the country marks 64th independence anniversary, the president of the ECOWAS Commission, Dr. Omar Aliu Toure, says Nigeria's leadership role will be more strategic to propel the regional bloc into a future of political stability and prosperity. Kelvin Ehonwaye reports. It was a gathering of Nigerian community in ECOWAS to celebrate the nation's 64th independence anniversary. Essentially, not for speeches, but an appreciation message to the event by the president of ECOWAS Commission set the tune for the celebration where members of Nigerian community at the ECOWAS Commission came together in unison to back their country's ability to emerge stronger from its current challenges into a global and continental economic giant. We congratulate the Nigerians that are working here because they are the bedrock of the organization. Uh, we have identified some of them that have been performing incredibly well in ensuring that the organization is meeting its objective. As Nigerians, we have every right to celebrate more successes. We shouldn't be emphasizing more of problems. Nigeria has made tremendous progress. It is an opportunity for us to celebrate 
our country, to appreciate the effort and the sacrifices of our forefathers, and to be able to build a legacy for the younger generations that are coming behind us. It was also used to recognize and honor some members of the Nigerian community in the Corps who have served the Commission Association diligently. In Abuja, Kelvin Ebonwaye, NCA News. Lagos will be our first port of call on Nationwide, and Jennifer will be our guide. On Nationwide. Now, there is no doubt that road network in Nigeria forms the arteries that keep the nation's socio-economic heart beating. As the nation marks this year's independence anniversary, Correspondent Lanrig Bilei focuses on this crucial sector and the future. Road network in Nigeria since independence has always been part of primary infrastructural development and has increased, especially during the 1970s, when the need to annex more towns, cities, and villages that have socioeconomic advantages into the network for economic development to become a reality. Road and highway engineers, while going through the records, affirmed that road networking in Nigeria became important, that successive governments were sometimes compelled to pay attention to it, despite other equally important sectors competing for attention. After 1960, when we were having our independence, there were just about 65,704 kilometers of road networks in Nigeria. And uh, uh, of course, uh, the surface part of that kind of road then was about 8,674 kilometers. And uh, between the time, after it depends, between the time of 1960 and 1975, we had on our own increased that road network from 65,000 to about 95,375 kilometers. They also called for increased private sector involvement, not only in construction, but in maintenance of the roads, giving leverage for government at all levels in the country to spread budgetary allocations equitably. We, we need to reform. The reform will now bring other investors because government alone the budgetary allocation cannot maintain our road, cannot build our roads, the road uh, sector fund, whereby the funding on the road sector does not rely on government allocation. They are convinced that in the nearest future, road network will not be only for socioeconomic reasons, but as a means of unifying the different ethnic groups. In Lagos, Larry Bilayi, NTA News. And to education, the education sector in Nigeria has experienced several transformations since independence. More schools have been established. Enrollment into various levels of institution has increased, with some policies formulated and reviewed. The recent reintroduction of the student's loan scheme also forms part of the journey. Hingino John Adams takes a look at how the student's loan has fared since independence. After Nigeria gained independence in 1960, the then administration embarked on a mission of strengthening the education sector by formulating several policies. To give indigent Nigerians who were willing to enroll into tertiary institutions a chance to achieve their dreams, the government of General Yakubu Gowon established the Nigerian Students' Loan Board in 1972. It was becoming increasingly difficult for many students, particularly those who are from indigent families, to pay. So the military government that was in power then decided to initiate the student loan scheme. However, it was grossly abused. Students took this loan and never paid back. To address the problem of recovery, the government of General Ibrahim Babangida came up with Decree Number no. 12, 1988, aimed at decentralizing the process of awarding and recovering the loans through the creation of regional offices. After many years without the student loan program, the country now has Nigerian Education Loan Fund, NEL Fund. But I think the NEL Fund initiative is a fantastic initiative, uh, especially coming at a time where Nigerians are having 
having to cope with uh, an economic meltdown, it will really help parents and indigent students to fund their education. You know, what makes it even more exciting is that the government is opening the basket, is opening the window for more um, you know, students to participate. Now that eligible students are already enjoying the student loan, it is expected that they should repay at the right time to enable others benefit. In Lagos, Hinginu, John Adams, NTA News. Thank you, Hinginu. Now, those are the stories from Lagos. Nationwide will continue shortly after the break, and my colleague in Sokoto will be taking the news. Thank you for joining us here in Sokoto on Nationwide. In identifying with the mood of the nation and its host community, NTA Sokoto Network Center, in collaboration with the Association of Private Schools Proprietors of Nigeria, Sokoto State Chapter, organized a befitting. sincere apologies as we have to disconnect with our Sokoto Network Center with a smile at the moment. But uh, the show that continues here with me in Abuja. Nigeria's creative industry converged on Abuja to celebrate 64 years of independence, supporting President Tinubu's renewed hope agenda. Juliana Nicholas reports on the grand event that promotes unity and national pride. Citizens gathered to celebrate Nigeria's independence anniversary. The atmosphere was electric, filled with patriotism and unity. At Mona Lisa Park, dignitaries, officials and citizens united amidst drums and colorful displays. The creative industry showcased stunning paintings, sculptures and Nigerian made products highlighting the country's rich cultural heritage. Organized by Renewed Hope Engagement, the Minister of State for Youth Development and others, the event emphasized unity and progress, echoing President Tunibu's Renewed Hope Agenda. It is a president that is determined, that is ready to work and make sure that we have a very wonderful legacy that everybody will start talking about. And I know it's tough. But we still need to celebrate. Here is celebrating Nigerians, right? We've got 64 years, we're resilient people. That is to show you no. the spirit of unity, well, the spirit of inclusivity, what President Bola and Metinemu is always advocating. It's time for us to embrace our diversity, it's time for us to come together as one. The celebration reached its climax as flags waved, patriotic songs filled the air. And lucky attendees received cash empowerment, symbolizing renewed hope and resilience. Smiles and joy filled the faces of Nigerians looking forward to a brighter future. God bless Nigeria. Juliana Nicholas, NTA News. Now let's reconnect with our Sokwoto Network Center and Asmao surely is ready. Sure, JD, good evening and thank you for rejoining us here in Sokoto. In identifying with the mood of the nation and its host community, NTA Sokoto Network Center, in collaboration with Association of Private Schools Proprietors of Nigeria, Sokoto State Chapter, organized a befitting 64th independence anniversary with a series of activities. Governor Ahmad Ali, represented by the Special Advisor on the resident community and internally displaced persons, Mariam Suleiman, congratulated Nigerians for the journey so far with an assurance of transforming various sectors for socio-economic development of the state. Sadia Omardigi reports. These are school children showcasing their talents at the 64th Independence Anniversary at the NTA Sokoto Network Center premises. The event was action-packed with performances by the participating schools. Our children who are celebrating that they should have all the assurances of His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Sokoto State. Like, as you know, in Sokoto, if you have been to Sokoto two years back and today Sokoto, a new Sokoto state, you can see that there's a lot of 
changes in Sokoto State. Regional Director, NTA Sokoto Network Center, Kailani Yusuf, describes Nigeria's 64th Independence Day as a milestone and urges the children to imbibe the spirit of love, patriotism, and unity for peace and prosperity of the country. He called on them to face their studies seriously in view of their status as leaders of tomorrow, stressing that education is the bedrock of societal development. The Zonal Director appreciates the Association of Private School Proprietors for collaborating with the station towards making the celebration reality in particular and contribution to educational development in Sakoto State. NTA is here to serve the government and the good people of uh, Sakoto State. The Chairman National Association of Private Schools Proprietors Sokoto State Chapter Ahmed Sarkin Fada commended the management of NTA Sokoto Network Center for the initiative. Sarkin Fada called on the federal government to provide adequate funding to salvage the education sector for sustainable growth and development of the country. We always collaborate to celebrate an uh, event of significance in the country. At the end of the ceremony, winners emerged in different categories with certificates of attendance also presented to the participating schools. Torrential rains has washed out Rara One Bridge on Ilila Badagri Highway that connects Sokoto Kebi and Zamfara States, restricting vehicular movement. The Latabilah reports that a team of experts has been dispatched to the scene to assess the situation for government's appropriate action. The Rara Bridge on the A1 Road that connects Kebi local government in Sakuto State with Kebi and Zamfara states is strategic federal highway that motorists from the three states and the Niger Republic ply to the southern part of Nigeria. Experts from National Emergency Management Agency NEMA, State Emergency Management Agency SEMA, and the Federal Roads Maintenance Agency FEMA have been dispatched to ascertain the level of destruction. Their visit coincided with that of Kebi State Governor Nasir Idris who experiences displeasure over collapse of the bridge and called on the federal government to as a matter of urgency effect repairs of the bridge and take necessary measures to rescue the second and the third bridges on the same road that are on the verge of collapse. This work is beyond the powers of Kebi state government. It's beyond the powers of Sokoto state government and Zampara state government. So therefore we are appealing to the minister to send a team of experts to come and look at this bridge so that the areas that collapse will be addressed and the area where the other bridge is about to have problems, they should be able to address it. Kepi Local Government Council Chairman commended efforts of the surrounding communities in alerting motorists even before the eventual collapse of the bridge. This is the main road linking Sokoto, Zamfara and Kebi, Niger up to Lagos. Without these bridges, there will be no traffic movement. And without no traffic, with no traffic movement, the economy is, will go down. The road from Jega in Kebi State is now deserted as motorists take longer routes before reaching their destinations. In Sakwato, Dalhatu Abdullahi, NTN. And that's it from here. It's back to Abuja with Ayodeji for more on Nationwide. Thanks, Asmao, in our Sakwato Network Center. 25 Top terrorist commanders in the Northwest have been eliminated in the last two weeks. The Chief of Defense Staff, General Christopher Musa, stated this at the graduation lecture of Army War College, Nigeria Course 8 in Abuja, stressing that this was achieved as a result of political will and joint efforts of security agencies. The team for this year's war course, protection of Nigeria's solid mineral sector for enhanced national security reflects our collective recognition of the strategic importance of the solid mineral sector to our national security and economic development. We need to do more for our men, for our security agencies, we need to do more so that we can scale the nation so that the nation can be a viable nation. Everybody now is on board and we're working together as a team. And I can show you, that's why you see a lot of uh, success has been achieved. In less than two weeks, I think we've taken, over, we've taken down over 20, 25 
commanders, bandit commanders that before now have had freedom of operation, now no more. Two G's on the run, it's a matter of time we'll get him and all the other ones remaining. General Musa noted that winning the war against insurgency requires a whole of society approach and enjoined citizens to support security agencies in the fight against criminality. 19 kidnapped children, including a four-year-old rescued by the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIP, from Calabar, are receiving necessary attention from the Kebbi state government. Governor Nasser Idris made this known while receiving the rescued children at the government house in Berninkeri. Abdul Jalil Mohamed Bawa reports. 19 underage children trafficked from Kebbi state have been located in Calabar by the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Person, NAPTIP, after receiving a tip-up. Some of the rescued children were said to be subjected to sexual abuse and forced labor, leading to psychological trauma. During the handover of the rescued children to Kebbi State Government, NAPTIP commander in Kebbi State, Musbao Iyak Aura, announced that three suspects were arrested in connection with the trafficking. Uh, we have the intention to collaborate with the state government to sensitize the community on danger of child trafficking, child labor, child abuse, which in most cases lead to organ harvest. Governor Nafir Idris urged parents to closely monitor their children, emphasizing that the state government prioritizes the protection of children's rights. Let these children serve as a warning to those who seek to exploit and harm our children. We will not tolerate such evil in our dear states. And I will continue to work tirelessly to bring in perpetrators to justice. To support the rescued children's recovery, Governor Idris directed the provision of necessary resources for rehabilitation and prosecution of the suspects. In Burning Kebi, Abdul Jalil Mohammed Bawa, NTA News. Right from Britain and KB, let's go over to the Pace Setter State, where our Ibado Network Center will be next on Nationwide. Thank you, Ayo Deji, and to welcome to Ibado. We'll bring you a report that the wife of the, the First Lady of Nigeria, Oluremi Sinubu, has distributed food items to 15 homes of special children in Oyo State. Omakende Igba reports that the food distribution, which is in line with the food outreach scheme of the Renewed Hope Initiative, was part of activities to mark Nigeria's 64th Independence Anniversary. Her report is here presented. Commemorating year 2024 Independence Day celebration in Ibadan, First Lady Omakende encouraged all to embrace in diversity for every child to succeed. She called on well-spirited individuals and organizations to join hands with government at all levels to bring a peg into the economy downturn for a better Nigeria. I want to acknowledge your tireless dedication, your endless love, and your incredible efforts in nurturing these wonderful children. You are true heroes and your role in their lives is invaluable. The world's symbolic presentation of gift items like clothing, foodstuff, toiletries and cash to the special children. This like, things like this can come in this time, but this has very been a great effort for the organization in terms of funding and financing, and uh, we believe that this will be very useful for the children in taking care of them. This is our first time being here. I really appreciate her for all what she has done. Our prayer was that God will give us more strength to do more for us in Jesus. They just called us and... All right, our sincere apologies again as um, the signals from our Ibado Network Centre are quite unstable. But from Ibado, let's go over to Katsina State, where the government there has taken significant steps towards improving healthcare delivery in the state with the inauguration of a sickle cell centre at the Katsina General Hospital. The centre, established under the pet project of the state's governor's wife, Zulehat Dikorada, also provides counselling for patients. Correspondent Alwal Haliru reports. 
The inauguration marks the commencement of the free drugs distribution to sickle cell patients across the three senatorial districts of the state. The initiative aims to alleviate the financial burden on parents and ensure that patients receive necessary treatment. Governor Dukorada highlighted the importance of genotype testing before marriage to minimize mortality rates. This emphasis underscores the state government's commitment to preventive measures and education. Let me assure you of the state continues support, commitment, and the implementation of all programs that will touch the lives and well-being of the people in the state. The wife of the governor, Zuleha Dukoreda, announced plans to expand the center, providing monthly free drugs to benefit more patients. All these service delivery points have to require human resources and equipment for optimal service delivery. By launching the center and free drugs distribution program, the Katsina state government is taking concrete steps towards improving healthcare outcomes and reducing the burden of sickle cell disease on families and communities. The traditional institution has also pledged support for health-related programs aimed at uplifting citizens' living conditions. The inauguration and free drug distribution are part of activities marking this year's Sickle Cell Awareness Week in the state. I'm Awal Halleru, NTA News. Time now to go for a break. More reports on Nationwide. Do stay with us. A television college draws with a... Glad you're still there. Nigeria's national policy on aging aims to address the unique needs and opportunities of the country's growing older population. The policy seeks to provide adequate social services for the elderly, ensuring their dignity and well-being. However, despite this progress, challenges persist in advancing the cause of senior citizens. Elizabeth. Omori takes a look at efforts by the federal government to tackle challenges confronting the policy. We have them, know them, and they provide wisdom on life's journey. Oftentimes, they're neglected. Abubakar Musa is a driver and part of the demographic data of older persons in Nigeria, contending with the 21st century realities. Three spoon, nine I carry I eat. My mouth no get bitter, no get anything. Hungry, they worry me. I don't know how to do. Aging, his counterparts say, can be graceful with comprehensive care and support systems for them. Make farming and trading and other things to be at a very lower rate. Men and help us put control for price. Help we feed, they buy something. Population ages 65 and above in Nigeria reported at 2.9857% in 2023 by the World Bank Collection of Development Indicators. The figures keep growing annually with numerous challenges from health to finance to guarantee an improved quality of life for older persons in Nigeria. The National Senior Citizen Center has been in the forefront advocating the need to end negative stereotyping, abuse of the elderly and address impediments of ageism. They need people to help them with daily activity, activities of daily living. NSCC is very much in that space now where we have developed the national policy guidelines for geriatric social care. We have developed national benchmark minimum standards in accrediting geriatric facilities and care agencies. We have developed the national occupational standards levels one to five working with NBTE. The federal government has been providing lifelong learning opportunities for senior citizens to improve their quality of life. The NSCC says protecting the dignity of the aging population is a collective responsibility. Elizabeth Omori, NTU News. Coalition of youth across political parties have appealed to opposition groups in Edo states to accept the outcome of September 21 governorship election, which majority of the ballot cast was in favor of Senator Monday Okwewolo of the APC. The group expressed displeasure over attempts by some individuals to foment trouble by engineering a post-election violence in the peaceful state in South South Nigeria. And the peace we have long enjoyed in those states must be safeguarded 
above all else. Any form of unrest or disruption will not, will not only damage the fabrics of our society, but will also hinder the progress and desire of our people. We urge the youth to remain peaceful and channel their energy towards productive endeavors that will, uh, that will contribute to the growth and development of those states, in particular, and the nation at large. We also encourage dialogue and constructive engagement as means of addressing grievances or concern. The coalition said the choice of Senator Monde Okpeholo and the deputy governor-elect Dennis Idausa was essentially a combination that is a perfect team that is frontally ready to rescue Edo State from the shackles of poor governance. The young politicians appreciated the resilience of the people of Edo State before, during and after the election and called for stakeholders' collaboration to move the state forward. Now let's join our Makudi Network Center and Fatima has the next set of reports. Thanks for joining us in Makudi. 750. Uh, quite an audio challenge again with our Makudi Network Center, surely. I've 10 permits. We will reconnect with our Makudi Network Center. All right. Uh, surely. The National Institute for Cultural Orientation is championing a cause for the adoption of a national language to foster unity among Nigeria's diverse population. Gufan Shaji Ugwanyi reports that with over 200 ethnic groups and 500 languages, Nigeria's linguistic diversity is both a strength and a challenge. <laughs> The National Institute for Cultural Orientation's advocacy stems from the conviction that a shared language can bridge cultural divides, facilitate communication and promote national cohesion. A national language would enable citizens to transcend ethnic boundaries, enhancing understanding and cooperation. Without a proper cultural identity, there can be a national identity. Every nation needs a national identity to further her, what we call cultural diplomacy. Some have advocated that various indigenous languages should be fused into pidgin to be a national language. By adopting a national language, Nigeria can strengthen its social fabric, enhance economic development, and project a unified identity globally. A language that you know all of us significantly understand will go a long way, and that is why we believe that um, uh, various policies that have been uh, put in place uh, with regards to uh, national languages, there should be the political will to implement them. NICO urges the government to prioritize language policy reform, invest in language education and engage citizens in this vital national conversation. In Abuja, Gufan Shaji Ugwani, NT News. The Federal Ministry of Women Affairs is targeting the empowerment of 500,000 women by building the financial capacity in partnership with the private sector. The Minister of Women Affairs, Uju Kennedy Ohanenye, gave this information during a meeting with members of a new generation bank in Abuja. Correspondent Ngozi Technicu reports. The decision to adopt women empowerment in clusters, the minister explains, is to curb the cases of inconsistencies among those already empowered who resorted to selling off their empowerment equipment. She therefore states that henceforth, Clusters of women on their cooperatives will be trained and empowered across the nation with close monitoring. Before now, we used to empower. Some of them would tell you, I've empowered 50 people. They've given them machine. I took my time. I went round to a few. They've all sold it. There are no more existing. Why did they sell it? 
they can make clothes, who buys? Who comes to them to patronize them? They are hungry. They sell the machine. Then I am not doing that. I am doing general empowerment where I have clustered Nigerian women into cooperatives. So whatever we're giving them will be industrial. The private sector, the minister says, is to double as integrity ambassadors and donors to facilitate the empowerment. The integrity ambassadors are the rich men that are bringing the money to be used and they have right to follow up on how it is used. There has to be that monthly accountability for you to see that indeed it's working. If you started with zero, at the end of month one, how many clusters are we empowered and in turn how many women and what's been the impact of the empowerment on GDP or society. Educating or determining part of our corporate social responsibility directly at women and women related issues. The minister emphasizes that the initiative is in line with the renewed hope agenda of President Bola Tinubu, adding that areas of empowerment include agriculture, among other skills. Ngozi Technikyo, NTA News. The global initiative of decarbonizing the earth in a bid to achieve net zero by 2060 may remain only a target if collective efforts are not tailored towards achieving the goal. Minister of State for Environment, Dr. Iziak Salako, at the Go Green Initiative to mark Nigeria's 64th independence, believes tree planting and deployment of technology will have a huge impact on timely realization of the set targets. Charles Alpha reports. There is a saying that the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago, and the second best time is now. This epitomizes the huge impact trees combined with smart climate technologies can have on the alien planet if the collective effort on the ongoing green initiative is sustained. The Ministry of Environment, AK Connect, and their partners acknowledge the need to promote environmentally sustainable initiatives and are using the occasion of the 64th anniversary of Nigeria's independence to commence planting of 1,000 economic trees by engaging students at the University of Abuja to protect the planet and promote nature-based solution while also connecting people through decarbonization to meet the net zero target. It's not just an activity, it's a mandate and we are committed to it and we are committed to the global initiative of decarbonizing the earth while protecting the planet. Highlighting the importance of trees, Minister of State for Environment, Dr. Iziak Adekunle Salako said this initiative aligns with the ministry's target of planting 6 million trees this year and President Bola Tinubu's sustainable forest management and conservation efforts. Our strength in Africa is nature yeah. and that is why we have always promoted nature-based solutions like tree planting that we're doing, you know, but we cannot but also utilize technology, capture, carbon capture technology are very critical. The groups are confident these collective efforts will go a long way in meeting the environmental and health needs of students in tertiary institutions. Charles Alpha, NTN News. And Austin Edemodu will be our guide on sports update. Ghanaian golfer Akunofa playing off a handicap of 9, shot a gross score of 75 and a net score of 66 to claim the title of overall best net champion at the 2024 IBB International Golf Independence Tournament in Abuja. The organizers say that the event successfully achieved its goal of using golf as a means to unite people from diverse cultures, generations and backgrounds while celebrating independence. I'm humbled. I, I am so happy to be the overall winner of this great event in this club. May this tournament inspire friendship, foster national pride and create unforgettable memories. Meanwhile, the new look UEFA Champions League phase continues on Wednesday with 18 matches in action to conclude match day two. At Anfield, five-time champions Liverpool will hope to sustain their momentum as they entertain Bologna. Defending champions Real Madrid travel to France to face Lille. In Turkey, Shakhtar Donetsk square up against Italian giants Atalanta. Finally, in tennis.
Ward number three, Carlos Akaras, overcome strong challenge from Ward number one, Jan Sina, to win the China Open. The Spaniard prevailed 6 7 6 4 7 6 in the epic final. With Sports Update, I'm Austin Edemodu, NTN News. President Bola Tinubu extends heartfelt condolences to the family of Oluwoli Johnson on the passing of their patriarch, Ben Oluwoli Johnson. The U.S.-based business executive and estate magnate passed away on September 17, 2024, in Crete, Illinois, at 72. In a personal tribute to the former governorship aspirant of Ondo State, and Chief Executive Officer of Benol Management and Development Company, President Tinubu described him as exceptionally intelligent and forward-looking. Recalling their shared interactions in Chicago, Illinois, President Tinubu noted that throughout their encounters, Mr. Ben, as he fondly called him, consistently demonstrated his intellectual prowess and business acumen, never shying away from showcasing his brilliance. The president also recalled Mr. Ben's extraordinary philanthropy, particularly his significant role in securing and donating over 42 million US dollars of hospital equipment to Nigeria, focusing on Lagos State. The statement indicates that he will be buried on the 5th of this month. And that's nationwide. I'd like to thank you for watching. I'm Ayo Deji. Mackindy, this is the Nigerian Television Authority. Bye-bye.